Welcome back. This is Mr. Erlin. You'll remember we just finished our last discussion on vertical angles and linear pairs. These are the relationships that we find when we get two lines intersecting. But this unit is actually called PIL, or parallel intersecting lines. So in addition to talking about what happens when one line meets another line, which is vertical angles and linear pairs, we also need to discuss what happens when two lines meet with a transversal. This is called a transversal. It cuts across other lines. These two lines may or may not be parallel. We won't worry about that now, whether or not they are. If, in fact, they're parallel, we get more information. But there's a naming convention that we can put together for all these angles anyway. If we consider, for example, 1, 2, 3, and 4 as these named angles, and we were to name these 5, 6, 7, and 8, if we think about all of the angles on this side in one group, all the angles on the other side in a different group. What we're going to be talking about today is when we're talking about one angle from the green side and one angle from the red side. Again, if we're talking about just the angles on the green side, what we're looking at is vertical and linear pairs. All the angles are either vertical angles or linear pairs. One and four are vertical, two and three are vertical, one and two are linear pair, two and four are linear pair, three and four are linear pair, one and three are linear pair. Same is true in all orange. Linear pair, linear pair, linear pair, linear pair, vertical, vertical. But what we're going to do today is come up with the naming conventions to discuss what happens when we're talking about one angle from each of the sides. To do this, I'm going to ask you to envision that we're talking about a river. These are the banks of the river. There's the water running through. And this transversal is also like a bridge. And what we're asking ourselves when we name the angle pairs is one of two questions. The first is, are the angles on the same side of the bridge, or are they on alternate sides of the bridge? And then the second question is, are they interior or exterior to the water. In other words, are they wet or dry? So these two questions will help us to find all of our terms. For example, when I look at these angles one, uh, for example, when I look at angle one and two, I'm going to ask myself, relative to this river, here's my bridge, one and two, are on the same side or alternate sides of the bridge? They're on alternate sides. So I'm going to write in the word alternate. And are they interior or exterior to the river? Are they wet or are they dry? In this case, they're interior. Therefore, we call these alternate interior angles. We'll abbreviate that with AIA. And all I'm asking you to do at this point is name this pair. So this relationship is alternate interior. When I come down to here, I'm going to look at these two, and I'm going to say, all right, one and two. They're again on alternate sides of the bridge. They're on the exterior this time. Angles. Which might be abbreviated AEA. -E -A. And this is the way we'll write it most times. What about these two? Are they on the same side or alternate side of the bridge? Well, this time they're on the same side. So we'll call these same side. This time they're on the inside. They're both wet. Interior. S-S-I. This set has same side again. They're both on the right-hand side of the bridge. And they're exterior. They're outside of the water. Call them S S E. These four names make up four of the five named pair relationships of angles when we're talking about one from the green and one from the orange, different sides of the water. Now there's one more grouping. It's these two. If I were to try to use our traditional naming convention of same side or alternate or interior or exterior, I'd have a little bit of a problem because this one, they're same side but this one's exterior, this one's interior. 
So this is a really important set. This is actually going to be the foundation of our postulate that we'll get to in a moment. These two are in a relationship whereby if you were to stand here and say, how do you describe this one? Well, it's in the upper left. How do you describe this one? Well, it's also in the upper left. In other words, relative to each other, these two are in a corresponding location. They're both corresponding to the same description. So we do call these corresponding angles. There is no shortcut notation or acronym that goes with it. These are simply called corresponding angles. And again, let's go back and just refresh. If they're all on one side, we don't use any of these new fancy names having to do with the river. Instead, we just focus on whether they're a linear pair, like 1 and 2 are a linear pair. 1 and 3 are vertical angles. And 2 and 3 are another linear pair. Okay? This is the naming of angle pairs associated with a transversal crossing two lines forming angle pairs.